everybody yo i just got done watching the new demon slayer mugen train movie literally the movie just finished 10 minutes ago i just drove home right now turn on the camera we're about to talk about it right now the only time that i've ever reviewed a movie here on the channel is when i reviewed the uh last my hero academia movie uh heroes rising that's the only time i reviewed a movie so i'm not i'm not gonna try to make it that long like i did before but god bro like there's a lot of stuff i want to talk about in this movie i'm just gonna give my general opinions my thoughts on it i'm gonna split the video up though um right now i'm gonna talk about like non-spoiler stuff in case for the people that haven't seen it yet or that want to see it or just don't want to get spoiled in general for anything that's happened in this movie i'm gonna talk about that right now and then i'll let you guys know and then i'll start to talk into like spoiler territory more like key plot points and whatnot but bro where do i start first of all i just gotta say this you foldable cannot be stopped these guys are madmen literally ufotable has to be like the best fucking animation studio out there like when i watch this movie i get that like you have a movie budget and it's supposed to look like a movie but like in my opinion i thought the first season of demon slayer already had like some movie type quality stuff i mean goddamn it's ufotable for fuck's sake right but watching ufotable with a movie budget dude it's like literally an experience dude it's a fucking journey man i was originally not gonna see this movie in theaters i was like ah you know maybe i'll just wait until the the dvd is coming out it just comes out on demand i can watch it online and whatnot i don't know why i was feeling lazy i'm like eh, you know what everything going on right now i'm like you know none of my friends have seen demon slayer no one's really caught up to it i'm just gonna be able to go alone but like ah, you know i'll just see it I'll, I'll just see it on my dvds and whatnot right and i'll see it on like my normal tv i am so glad that i decided to watch this shit in theaters bro because the setting the theater the audience everything was perfect man it just it looks so beautiful that's what i gotta give it like animation i'd give it like a 1 million out of 10 like you photoable these people cannot be stopped i just i am in love with demon slayer's art style everyone just looks so colorful and vibrant and just alive man i just it's so good now right off the bat this movie honestly i feel like you can't really take somebody in who hasn't seen the original like first season of demon slayer and expect them to know what's going on because like they waste like no time like there's no like backstory explaining Tanjiro and what he's up to, Zenitsu and Inosuke, like, oh, what they're trying to do and whatnot. It literally just right in. Like they're on the train already, you know, going off, you know, like it left off on the first uh on, on the last episode of the first season. Like, no explanation at all. Like, there's no backstory or anything. So the movie right away expects you to know who these characters are, what their powers do, and you know what the main goal is right now. You know, they don't even explain who Muzan is, the upper moons, lower moons, the Hashiro, and anything like that, right? It just right into the mix, and I love that, bro. I love that because, honestly, a lot of movies do do that where, like, they kind of spend a lot of runtime. Like, like I already know who Tanjiro is. I know who Zenitsu is. I know he does the lightning and stuff like that. I'm like, bro, I know this already. Let's get into it. So I'm so glad that they just wasted no time straight into it right off the bat, dude. Goku. In the span of two hours this man has became top two favorite characters in the show top two tanjiro tanjiro guys forgive me right now it's raw as hell right now like i i you know I, there's no script or anything like that tanjiro this dude goes off like tanjiro i know everyone labels tanjiro as like oh he's the nice guy you know they, they kind of compare him a little bit to deck if you like oh he's always crying he's nice but like the thing is like they humanized him so much in this movie where it's like, yeah, he's a nice guy, but this man has some fucking balls on him, bro. Like, n s pause on that. Like, literally, Tanjiro in this movie goes off, man. Like, this dude has so much vigor, so much fire in him, he so much intensity, and I love that, dude. Like, I forgot how much I love Demon Slayer, man. Like, when I was watching this movie, I'm like, wait, I forgot. I'm a huge Demon Slayer fan. It feels good to be back, bro. Like, oh my God. Tanjiro, definitely one of the highlights of this movie. But going back to Rengoku, this man managed to become one of my favorite characters of all time in, in, in the Demon Slayer universe, at least, in, in the span of two hours, dude. Top two favorite characters right now, in my opinion, at least, in my opinion. Because before, Tomioka was my favorite Hashira. Rengoku got that spot right now, bro. I I I'm sorry. I mean, I know like I, I know that all the Hashiras are probably gonna get their shine later on, but right now Rengoku got that spot, bro. That man is just too goaded, man. But yeah, 
going back to like the plot you know it, it it follows basically you know the end of season one they're on the train right now and basically the um lower first i believe um he is attacking the train and that's kind of where it's left off i don't want to like i don't want to get too specific into things i'll get you know specifics later on but it basically just leaves off you know like a direct continuation of the last episode of season one like everything in this movie was just hitting the comedy was there like they still had that like classic demon slayer comedy you know like the character interactions between everybody it was hitting it was solid it was nice rengoku being introduced into the mix and him interacting with you know tanjiro and the rest of the squad that was so so cool i love him rengoku he's just he's so he's so fucking cool dude he's so dope bro and like i'm not gonna get like two specifics into the fights but the fights in this movie holy fuck dude like they're so good that's all i gotta say like they are amazing dude amazing one fight in, in in particular which i'll talk about in the spoiler section has to be like one of my favorite fights of all time and i mean that with the utmost certainty this movie is incredible now i know i'm praising this movie a lot right now but like i don't want people to go into this movie thinking like this shit is gonna change the way you view the world and, and your life choices and everything like that it's gonna it's literally gonna shift the balance of the universe like no at the end of the day it's a shonen movie that's just animated like god bro like god himself animated this shit crafted it with his own hands bro the people at ufotable are literally jesus christ reincarnated it just tackles so many different themes and there's so many like unexpected events and turns and twists that i honestly didn't expect i just thought like oh you know they're on the train and someone is attacking the train and they gotta fight in the train i'm like and th that is kind of what happens but like you know there's different stuff that happens in between and i'm just i didn't expect that at all so like right off the bat my expectations were already kind of subverted but bro like there's just so much stuff i can talk about and like i want to try my best because i want you guys to watch this bro if you have the chance please 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 do yourself a favor and watch this in the theaters man like the environment is so it's just it's so special man like being able to watch an anime on the the big screen luckily i was able to watch demon slayer in its original japanese with subtitles because before when they were showing my hero academia heroes rising in my area forgive me i'm sweating right now i'm kind of hyped up um they only allowed the english and like i never watched the english before and it was still fun like i still enjoyed the movie but like the fact that i was able to continue demon slayer the way i started it was amazing so please if you have the chance do yourself a favor you know if you have friends or anything like that please you know go watch this movie because it's so goddamn incredible but yeah guys that's all i can really talk about without going into spoilers i'll talk about spoilers here in a second but if you are going to leave the video right now and you are going to plan to see the movie in the future thank you so much for watching this video hopefully i convinced you guys enough you guys you know like my opinions and thoughts on this movie because it was absolutely amazing make sure to subscribe guys and hit that like button also follow me on twitter if you haven't already but other than that guys it's been your boy ivory and i'm out peace but for the people that are here and staying that you either have read the manga you don't care about spoilers or have you seen the movie yourself i'm going to talk about spoilers right now so hey we need to talk about this final battle rankoku versus akaza bro bro we need to talk about this shit right here bro if tanjiro versus rui broke the internet if rengoku and akaza got that same spotlight like that same you know attention the internet would have literally imploded bro like a fucking nuclear bomb would have gone off rengoku versus akaza has to be one of my it's probably my favorite fight in demon slayer so far my favorite fight in demon slayer probably one of my favorite fights of all time bro oh my god you photable snorted about 20,000 lines of black tar fucking cocaine before they animated this stuff. The music was hitting. The, the theme behind the fight, like the weight behind it, it was so strong because before this, they never even introduced um, an upper moon before. So like this is the first time we're ever seeing an upper moon in battle. Akaza, he's the upper third. And him talking and everything like that and like the, his design it's just oh my god like when rengoku and akaza were fighting i'm like damn i really want rengoku to win but akaza he's kind of dope as fuck too but yeah seeing him fight it was insane because it managed to make me 
feel so much for this fight because I'm not gonna lie, like the fight really does happen abruptly. Like there's not like, like Akaza isn't introduced in like the first, in like the beginning of the movie. Like he's not like the main threat. Like the main threat is the lower first, you know, he, you know, he's taking over the train. He's trying to consume all of the, you know, the passengers, all 200 passengers right now. And he's kind of the main threat for the, the good chunk of the movie. But Akaza, he's at the very end. He just shows up and he's like, and, and Rengoku has to take care of him because Tanjiro got injured. So it's Rengoku against Akaza right now. And bro, when I tell you, the whole audience stood up, bro. As soon as they started fighting, the whole audience was getting hyped, bro. I was in that bitch hyped as fuck, dude. Like, I love how the audience too. It's like, we're, we're so, you know, mature and we're so like, you know, we're so peaceful like when all the like when all like the the ordinary stuff is happening it's like oh yeah you know they're having fun time but as soon as the hype shit everyone's like yo let's go bro like oh my god it's so hype okay but getting back on track this fight was amazing dude oh my god it was so fucking good dude i i can't stress that enough this fight is so good dude it managed to make me like akaza and rengoku in such a short amount of time which was absolutely insane another kind of different plot point um that I didn't know about was this dream sequence that they can have that that can happen. So like basically, um, the lower first has the ability to put people to sleep and kind of show them uh, a dream of whatever he wants. Like mostly he shows them like peaceful dreams, like what like what they want in life. Like for example, he puts everyone to sleep and Tanjiro is basically dreaming of him with his family again because as you guys know, all of his family is dead except Nezuko, but. So he puts him in the dream and he's kind of in this dream sequence living out life in, in, in this fake world. Zenitsu is with like Nezuko picking like the, the fruits and like the peaches and stuff like that, which is really funny. Inosuke had this weird fucking drug lace dream where like he's like mining underground with the crew who are like animals and stuff like that. It was it, in those cases, it was definitely weird. And Rengoku's was him with like his father and his brother, which was really interesting too. We got a little bit more insight into him. Like I said, I, I can't stress this enough. It's crazy how I was able to care for Rengoku so much. But going back to that, like that dream sequence was really good. It added so much weight for the stuff that happens later on. And it added a lot more character to everybody. Oh, mostly I would say it added character to Tanjiro, especially Tanjiro and a little bit of Rengoku a little bit. But like Zenitsu's and Inosuke's were kind of just comedy. But yo, going back to this, Tanjiro, that man is legit, bro. That man is so fucking hard. Like, I, I, like Tanjiro, that man is so underrated in terms of an MC, I believe. Like, yes, he's kind of generic in terms of like, he's nice and he spares his, his, his enemies and stuff like that. But when he's not sparing his enemies and he really wants to get shit done, that man does go demon time, bro. And you'll see that a bunch in this movie. But yeah, the, for Tanjiro to be able to escape the dream, he literally, he literally just kills himself. He literally slashes his neck in the dream and he wakes up. And what's cool is that this is not the first time he gets put under this dream because when he's fighting the lower first, the lower first literally keeps putting the spell on him like over again. He's like, sleep. He goes to sleep. He kills himself in the dream. Sleep kills himself in the dream. And it's so cool to see him fight because in the middle of like a, like a technique, right? He'll be like, you know, like water breathing, second technique. He'll be in the middle of spinning. He'll get to put the sleep and he'll like, Kind of like fall, he'll obviously he'll fall asleep and then like he'll wake up again and like continue like the technique it's so cool like the continue like the continue the continuation of everything right like it's so fucking cool like i don't know how to explain that shit, but it's so dope to see him fight like that man that was so fucking cool oh my god it was so cool tanjiro and rengoku definitely highlights of this inosuke really showed up too uh zanitsu got a little bit of shine you know like whenever nezuko was in trouble he did pull out the goddamn thunder breathing and that was really cool to see but Zenitsu honestly he didn't really do too much and Nosuke definitely did a lot more than him but um like that was cool like I, it really surprised me that the lower first kind of turned into the actual train and they were fighting that was kind of strange uh finding this like gross grotesque like monster thing um that was really cool it was really interesting to see the lower first um dialogue like talking about like I, I want to redo things over again like I was going to challenge the upper moons because he was talking like yeah the upper moons have been in like that th those ranks for centuries though like they are those are the only ones that are able to kill the hashiras and and gave a little bit more like philosophy be but behind humans because as akaza and rengoku were fighting akaza was uh, like egging on rengoku like turn into a demon 
you know the wounds that you inflict on me are already healing the wounds on you they're they're irreparable you know like me you can heal in seconds and then it's just this whole thing about how beautiful humanity is and how how beautiful and fragile it is and like how important that is and it was so cool to see that this man rengoku though once again man he's so fucking cool dude the, the sequences with akaza were just absolutely amazing but if you guys have watched the movie or read the manga or you don't care rengoku unfortunately at the end of the movie he does die rengoku does die and when i say the whole audience was in tears bro the whole audience including a boy yes including a boy the whole audience was in tears man the 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 conversation between Tanjiro and um Rengoku beforehand and, and and Tanjiro like yelling at Akaza as he was running away Tanjiro was like you know like we're always fighting when you guys have the advantage like in the dark bro why are you running away why are you such a coward and stuff like that right and uh, one thing I didn't even know Tanjiro can throw his sword and have like the fucking the flames on it like that was dope as hell but going back to like the whole conversation between Rengoku and, and Tanjiro like it was just crazy how they were at they were able to add so much weight to everything in such a short amount of time man like i, I can't get over that I, I felt so much for everybody in such a short amount of time and it really gave me a little bit of a new outlook on demon slayer i'm not gonna lie this movie felt a lot more i don't i don't want to say it was like mature but it definitely had a lot more like i guess i guess i would say like it had a little bit more of a mature theme to it like it definitely didn't feel like oh just kids fighting demons and like yeah tragedy happens but like we're still kids fighting demons it was like damn dude you know the pain of letting go of the past and moving forward the pain of you know having a wall in front of you and after overcoming that wall having another bigger wall in front of you and tougher foes like it's just man dude like it was some really great themes presented in this movie i am so so excited for demon slayer season two whenever that gets released hopefully soon i know it's getting released you know this year and i'm so hyped for that because i can't wait to react to it here on the channel bro like i wish i wish you guys like i could have like i don't know like like shown you guys my reaction to the movie but like i, I don't like reacting to like movies and stuff like that like i just wish you could have like seen my reactions to just like certain parts man but like oh man dude like demon slayer i'm so excited for season two bro i'm excited to see you know the rest of the hot shows in action the continuation of tanjo's journey and zenitsu and inosuke and nezuko and stuff like that man i'm just so excited to get back into the demon slayer world because this movie reminded me how much i love everything about this series but yeah everybody um that's really gonna be it man those are my thoughts and opinions on the new demon slayer mugen train movie please 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 see this movie for yourself even you know if you don't care about spoilers and you still watch until the end of the video right now and you haven't seen the movie like still do yourself a favor and watch it man like the animation the actions on point the music's on point the character interactions on point um but yeah anybody that's seen the movie or you know has read this part of the manga you know you can discuss it down below let me know your guys' opinions on this the one thing that i'm really surprised about is that people like not not they don't think this they actually you know believe that this is like a like this is not even like a top five arc in in the entirety of demon slayer and, and i'm gonna keep it real bro this is probably my favorite arc of demon slayer this is probably like this felt like the end to me like i don't know like the the impact between between the last fight between akaza and rengoku felt like that was the end bro and i'm like jesus dude like it was just so powerful it was so moving ah i just can't wait i can't wait to get back into this but yeah everybody that's gonna be it from you boy um i <laughs> uh, appreciate you guys sticking with me if you made it to the end of the video i really appreciate you guys i had a lot of fun watching this movie i had a lot of fun as you can see making this video just you know we we're just talking chilling and having a good time right but yeah guys um that's gonna be it from you boy make sure to leave a like and subscribe guys also make sure to follow me on twitter uh super z takes like one second of course you guys can always change your mind later and other than that guys have you guys a blessed day make sure to watch this movie if you haven't already and if you have you have my utmost respect but yeah everybody um it's been your boy ivory and i'm out peace